we're gonna take and uh, go ahead and set these up and show you my process, kind of my workflow. But we hit on a combo that we've been trying to get for a really long time now. Hey guys, welcome back. It's Friday afternoon. We have another awesome video for you. We're looking at some crazy clown pies. We got really lucky on the clutch. It was Orange Dream, Yellow Belly, Leopard, Enchi, Pastel, clown pies. Crazy stuff. And the female actually proved out she was pied posset clown. So a lot going on. So we're gonna show you those and then we're gonna talk about how we set them up. Like the process we go through from having the babies to putting them into our system. So, some good information, and last we're gonna end up with a crazy, crazy new highway clown combo. Let's get into it. All right, so here's our clutch. We have a couple crazy clown pies, orange dream wildness, crazy ivory. Let's look at them individually and check them out. So the coolest kind of most gene-packed clown pie here is this beautiful girl. I've been working so hard to put Enchi into my clown pies just because of all the pattern it brings. And I've had a gold snake now for a OD Inchy yellow belly clown pied. And it's, I've actually gone past, I got an ivory version, but this one is pastel inchy yellow belly leopard clown pied and possible orange dream. So what a wild kind of, wild kind of mix that is. We're not gonna know if it's orange dream until we breed it. What a pretty girl though, but I love how much pattern, just absolutely packed with pattern. A lot of times when you put leopard into the clown pieds, it's gonna actually make a relatively high white snake, but and she just cleans it right up, perfect. The other clown pied was one we've made a few of and I never get tired of making. This is Orange Dream Yellow Belly Clown Pied. Absolutely phenomenal. You know, that Orange Dream Yellow Belly Pied is just perfectly be beautiful, beautiful orange saddles. And then of course the clown head gives you a whole different twist on it because you know this is the double recessive. Another girl, she's gorgeous. Then we got an pastel enchi leopard ivory clown het pied. How wild is that? And possible orange dream. So you see here we have the ivory, right? So it takes away almost all the pattern. But when you get leopard in there, it adds some of it back. So we have a, do have a nice line down the back here. And she kind of really extenuates the color. And also that line is more purple, more bold than the, we made a non um, Enchi version of it recently. So really, really cool. Absolute powerhouse male, pastel Enchi leopard ivory clown het pied. Wild. Next two are just really good fundamental pieces. We got a Enchi yellow belly pied het clown. Gorgeous, and then a male that I'm definitely gonna be using since I didn't get a visual version. I'll keep this boy back. This is Orange Dream Enchi Yellow Belly Pied Het Clown. So this is the one I wanted the clown pied version of. I might still make this here. We have some stuff incubating, but in case I miss a male, this will be my breeder male here going forward. We're gonna narrow down those odds for next year. This would be phenomenal in an actual, with, with an Et Clown head on there. It's just so orange and so much pattern, incredible. So we have our clutch right here. We're gonna take and uh, go ahead and set these up and show you my process, kind of my workflow. Because we go through a lot of babies every year, it's really important to have a process to um, get them all ID'd, set up, and then photographed and into the system. So first thing we do is just a generic label printer. We're gonna go ahead and print off all the IDs. Now this is 2021. Clutch number eight. So my code is 2108. And then we're just gonna do numbers one through, yeah, one, two, three, four, five of them. So one, two, I'm gonna print them all out here. We have the labels done, 2108, 02, 03, 04, 05. And then we're gonna take it and go ahead and put them on the tubs. So we do this initially just to get the tubs set up. And then we go through and identify each of the snakes individually. So, until we've done this a few times over the years. Next thing we do is we go through and identify each snake by the genetics on there and type it in and make labels for each individual animal. All right, so this first one, pastel, inchy, yellow belly, leopard, clown pie, and it's a female. So we're gonna put a F. So I'm using all my little shortcuts. And on my label, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put orange dream in parentheses because it's possible from the pairing, I can't rule it out. And 
if I were, were ever to breed this snake, I don't want to forget that it's in the mix. When I get my results, I want to be able to know where it came from. So there's our label, all set. And we're gonna go ahead and put it on the tub and put this first snake away. First one to put away, we're gonna repeat the process with each one from here. All right, so we have them all set up and labeled there now. I wanna show you a little bit how we set up the tub and why we do it this way initially. All right, so this is the new Freedom Breeder tub that we just got, we're replacing. It's got the air holes and everything, we really like it. So we don't use a deli cup in the actual cup holder. So this would be an eight ounce deli holder. In our experience, what happens is it's too much water, it sloshes a lot. We like our little two inch couplings with a two ounce deli inside. It's, we love that, it's nice and disposable. And it actually fits well in here so it doesn't get pushed around the tub anymore, which is kind of nice. We start one on a paper towel for the first three times we try to feed them, basically. So the reason why we start them on a paper towel is because they really like being on Reptichip. They're gonna do really well on Reptichip, and a way to trigger them to eating will put them on Reptichip. So what we do is we start them on a paper towel to see if we can get them going first. That way, if they don't for some reason want to eat, we have something we can still change about their environment in order to get them to. We find that 90 five percent probably plus will eat on the paper towel but that last five percent if we switch them after a couple tries to rep chip that last five percent will eat if we start them on rep chip and 95 percent of them eat there's really nothing we can change to give them that little extra incentive so you just give us a little bit of tools in our bag um, when we start them on paper towels to get them eating if there's some kind of problem whatsoever so the last step in the setup is to photograph every animal so that we can put it into inventory and be able to track it from here so we're gonna start with the first one. Most people assume they have a really fancy setup because our photos do turn out really, really well, but it's actually extremely basic. We use a, basically a poster board that I've turned into a little light box and it gives a nice white background here for the flash to bounce off of a little bit. So we'll pose the snake, I'll snap a quick picture. And we have it photographed. So the next step will be to take, put the snake back in here, and we take a picture of the front of the tub so that we can go in and we can add the ID number to the actual image in our computer, and we have a really good record to be able to look them up later. And um, we actually put the ID on the image itself so that if the picture ever shows up on the web some weird place, and we need to know the details of where that, what the snake was and where it came from, um, we can always look at the actual photo itself and get the, the ID number, the parents, and all the details about it. We'll just repeat that for every snake in the clutch. So the very last step in the process is I'll take the actual breeding card that has the information Sire, the dame, how many times he was bred, the date laid and everything. I'll put the hatch date on here. And then the number of babies that hatched so we can track how many eggs didn't hatch throughout the season. And the last thing that we do with this card is we take a picture of it. And we put it into the system right with the clutch itself so it can always be cross-referenced. We can look it up by the file name and look exactly what happened on that clutch for eternity from now on. So it's a really nice way, again, to track it. This can be lost, we'll file this away too, but if this was ever lost, um, we have it digitally as well. All right, so that's it for this video. Before you go, I have one more special snake I wanna show you. This is one we put on Instagram last week when it was still in the egg, and it was just a three egg clutch, but we hit on a combo that we've been trying to get for a really long time now. This is the Leopard Highway Clown. I actually thought I hit this combo three years ago, oh, two to three years ago when we hit the, hit the highway clown, it was just a really high pattern animal and I thought maybe it was a leopard, but now we have the official proof. The animal with leopard is way better, way more contrast, way darker. And just check out the orange, purples. It's all kind of just the perfect combination of highway and clown and the leopard just brings so much contrast in it. Really happy with this animal. It ended up being a little girl and I think she might be, uh, she might be headed overseas here shortly. It's because we someone fell in love with her. I'm gonna miss her a lot. 
All right, guys, that's it for this week. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Subscriptions on YouTube don't matter that much for you guys anymore, but it shows me that you like it and that you care and that you keep making these. So appreciate every one of you and we'll see you next week.